Hey guys, Christina here. I wanted to take a couple minutes today and talk to you about why Busy Minds Box was founded. So I've always really loved working with the older adult population. Uh, when I was a teenager, my grandparents got their very first computer. They had no idea how to use it. And I loved computers. So I gave them weekly computer classes. I even developed a little training manual for them and they learned. So when I was in college, I was in the Computer Science National Honor Society and I developed a program to go to a local senior center and hold computer classes. So I think we had like six or seven teachers and we would go to this, cla this classroom with four very ancient computers and the room would overflow with the amount of people who really wanted to learn. And it was so rewarding for us as teachers. It was amazing being able to hand over this information to improve their quality of life and teach them to connect with their families and look things up and make travel plans in ways that they never could before. And it was just such a great experience. After college, my career took a turn. I didn't work in IT very long and I became an editor in the advertising space. And I did that for about 10 to 12 years. Um, but after a really trying time, I decided it wasn't for me and I wanted to move on to the next thing. And when I reflected back on all of the times that made me the happiest, it was working with older adults. So I decided to go back to school to become a gerontologist. It's somebody who studies aging and the aging process. Simultaneous to all that, my father's mother was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2017. She had been showing signs for a while, but um, she was officially diagnosed and it's really hard. An Alzheimer's diagnosis is hard because there's a lot to learn and a lot to do in a short period of time. Because Alzheimer's is a progressive neurodegenerative disease, people lose the ability to do things that they were always able to do. So some people think Alzheimer's is just a memory disease and you lose your memory. That's not true. Alzheimer's affects all parts of your brain and it affects them differently and it is different for every person who's diagnosed or undiagnosed. Um, so you lose the ability to pay your bills and take care of your pets and your household. You lose the ability eventually to remember to eat and remember to go to the bathroom and um, all of these things that we take for granted every day we then have to figure out how to accommodate what's happening with her. So that was going on. We had just kind of gotten her settled. And then my mother's father started showing signs. His uh, telltale sign was he asked my mother to take over his bill paying. My grandfather was the most meticulous, financial brained person. So asking somebody to take over the finances was a major red flag. And we started seeing more signs. And so he was diagnosed right as I was applying to become a gerontologist. So whereas originally I was going back to school just to learn more about the aging process and how I might be able to advocate for older adults, now I had a mission. Now I had two grandparents diagnosed with Alzheimer's. And it was hard dealing with two different Alzheimer's diagnoses on both sides of the family in very different situations, both with very different sets of needs. It was really tough. And that's just logistically. Emotionally, it is really hard to wrap your head around knowing that two of your grandparents soon weren't going to remember who you were. And that is really hard to come to terms with. And it was hard for my whole family to come to terms with it. But then we were snapped back to reality and we had to make sure their bills were paid and make sure that they were eating enough and taking their medications. And it was crazy. And it, it dawned on me at some point that if my family was going through this, other families must be going through this. Other families must not really know where to turn or what to do or how to anticipate things or just need some support. So I was in the middle of school and trying to help my family through this. I acted as their gerontologist and tried to teach them and show them what might be next and how to plan. And I was using everything I learned. I was constantly studying or had my head in a book somewhere because I really wanted to help my family. 
So my now husband at the time suggested that maybe we do something a little bit more tangible. So we developed a website called understandingalzheimers.org that lets you change the content based on your learning level. So so another thing that dawned on me during that time was that everybody learns really differently. Like I had learned that back when I was teaching the computer classes that everybody learned differently. Some people were more hands-on. Some people needed to be just verbally told. And when you're faced with a disease like Alzheimer's, you are so emotional that you need things to be broken down a little bit differently. So what we did was we wrote a website called understandingalzheimers.org and it lets you change the content based on your understanding level. So if you're a doctor or you work in high science or something like that, you might go to the high level. There's also a medium and a lower level, so you can always switch between those. And it's sort of meant to be a tell-all about Alzheimer's disease in a way that hopefully people can understand a little bit better than websites because typically websites are written at a higher reading level than most people understand. So my goal was to make it more understandable for other families out there who were going through what we were going through and needed to know what to expect. So we did that, we published that. Um, I kept helping my family through these diagnoses, COVID hit. And it was even tougher now. My father's mother was in an assisted living or nursing home at the time, and it was completely locked down. So we couldn't see her for months. My other, my mother's parents were more or less locked down in their apartment. And by that time, we had an aide for my grandfather. My grandmother, um, you know, she kind of went stir crazy a little bit in the house with somebody who is asking you the same questions over and over again and forgetting to do the same things over and over again. And when there's no escape, when you can't go out, when you are completely isolated with that person that you knew for 60 something years, knew how to do those things, it can drive you a little nutty. Um, So we did everything that we could for the two of them to make them feel less isolated. We had a lot of social distancing parties and stuff like that. Um, On Christmas Eve of 2020, my grandmother, my mother's mother, was rushed to the ER with COVID. And she had to stay in the hospital um, for about 10 days. She was, her symptoms weren't super severe, but there was this, this real worry that she would bring it home to my grandfather, who was declining pretty rapidly at that point. So we were afraid that if he caught it, that it would uh, facilitate things even faster. So she came home, and she was never really the same. She would have these... Um, violent outbursts. She would scream and yell and throw things and um, it was really tough. So she was in and out of the hospital. We thought maybe it was a result of COVID or maybe she was just like super unhappy or depressed or something and it turned out to be Alzheimer's. So that was the third diagnosis in my family and she was um, for a while in a psychiatric rehab because she suffered a lot from behavioral challenges. And she was diagnosed um, in, I would say late February of 2021. And she came home from the hospital three days before my grandfather died of Alzheimer's. And that's really, really tough because she couldn't wrap her head around why her husband it was so sick she kept saying i don't understand why fred is so sick he was fine a couple weeks ago and that's true but his disease just sort of uh, took over at a certain point and she had been gone in and out of the hospital for a while so her memory of him um wasn't quite what it was and she was going through alzheimer's so her memory was not great as it was. So fortunately enough, she was with him when he passed. And in the days that followed, she became really bored and really lonely. And here's this woman in her mid eighties with a new Alzheimer's diagnosis. So she's dealing with her own uh, memory challenges and losing certain abilities. But on top of that, 
she was used to being a housewife and she was used to being a caregiver at that point too. And that's gone. All of a sudden, just like that, and she didn't realize that it was going to happen quite that fast. So, you know, we helped her as much as we could. She had an aide who lived with her and took care of her beautifully, but not quite in an emotional way. Um, She made sure that my grandmother ate and took her meds and that the house was meticulous, which was very, very important to my grandmother. But there wasn't a lot of activity and there wasn't like a lot of back and forth. And even when we visited, we would sit down to kind of do something and we would notice my grandmother couldn't quite get started with things on her own. And I woke up one day and I said to my husband, wouldn't it be great if somebody mailed out activities to people like my grandmother with early Alzheimer's or or in an attempt to sort of reduce our risk of going through what I had just gone through three times, maybe there's a way that we can help people reduce their risk. And that's how Busy Minds Box was formed. It was just an idea. I woke up with it one morning. I don't know if I was dreaming about it or what, um, but I felt like I have to do this. I felt this incredible drive to help my grandma and help people who are in her position and maybe even help people so that they would never have to be in her position. And so I did investigate it a little bit and I just went for it. Now I am a planner through and through, so it was a little bit of a spontaneous risk. I didn't think about becoming a small business owner. I didn't think about the logistics. I thought I have to help. This is my way. This is my shot. You know, originally when I went back to school to become a gerontologist, I wanted to advocate for older adults who were at disadvantages. And originally I thought that was going to be in the form of technology, you know, maybe helping people to um, use technology or become more familiar with it. But as, you know, life kind of went on, it took a very different path. And this felt and still feels like a tangible way to advocate for older adults and their brain health. So I decided to do a subscription activity box. It felt like the best and most consistent way to get these activities out there to the people who really needed them. And that might be somebody who wants to reduce their risk of cognitive decline. It might be somebody with mild Alzheimer's or dementia. It might even be someone with moderate Alzheimer's or dementia, although they would need a little bit more help completing the activities in the boxes. Every single box is a different theme, so it's a chance to learn something brand new. Learning something new is one of the best ways that we can keep our minds active and engaged as we age. We are never too old to learn something new. Don't ever let anyone tell you that. So inside is a collection of arts and crafts and puzzles and games and sensory helpers and books and memory joggers to help you relive the past. And as I was researching what products would be appropriate for this specific purpose, I started seeing certain patterns emerge. And I had started, when I was in school, started seeing these things pop up over and over again. And as I got deeper and deeper into the research, I realized there are seven things, seven pillars of brain health, I've called them, that can really help us maintain brain health throughout our lives. And they are eating well, physical activity, mental fitness, social connection, quality sleep, stress relief, and positivity. And these are the things that pop up over and over again. So all of those items that I mentioned that relate back to that central learning theme also relate to one of these pillars of brain health. So behind all of the fun and games and activities is something that will really help your brain health. And that is the goal here, right? We want to make sure that you are maintaining your brain health throughout your life. And what better way to do that than through activities and games that have this hidden meaning behind it. It doesn't feel like work. It doesn't feel like you have to put so much effort into maintaining your brain health. We can do it through activities. We can do it through learning and putting that stuff into practice. So that is how Busy Minds Box was founded. If you have watched the entire video, Thank you so much for sticking with me this long. I hope that you understand a little bit more about why brain health is so important and the ways that we can 
can work to reduce the risk of cognitive decline. So thank you so much for watching again. Please check us out. Um, if you know somebody who might benefit from this, please pass along the information. If you have questions, I love talking about this stuff. So please feel free to reach out on social media or email me or find me somehow. Um, and thank you again so much for watching. Have a good day.